This study has been developed by University of Vigo, University of Oviedo, and the company Allen Space. The main objective of the Lunar Caves study proposed by ESA is giving solution to the many challenges that arise in the exploration of lunar lava pits in the Marius Hill region. This particular study aims at three of these challenges. Assuming that exploration is carried out by the swarm of small robots, the first challenge is to de safely deploy them in the bottom of the pit. The second one is providing energy to those robots during a full lunar day. And the third one is providing them with a data link. The main elements of the mission are the lander, which will transport a rover equipped with a crane, and also it will be equipped with a container for the exploring robots. The crane is equipped with a head that includes a method for holding one exploring robot at a time, a wireless power charger, and a radio frequency data link. Of all these elements, this study focuses on the ones highlighted in red, and also in a small part the battery charger of the exploring robots. The different stages of the mission, according to the proposal of this study, will be explained. This explanation will be collated with those regarding the analysis and design of the different elements, wireless charger, crane, mast. The rover will taxi from the landing point to the location of the Marius Hill skylight. There is the vertical pit for accessing the caves. Once there, the rover will search for a suitable deployment point. The rover will then turn into deployment mode. For understanding this mode, it is necessary now to explain all the mechanical design of the crane and its different elements. The crane structure has a main chassis, which is attached to the rover. This chassis also holds four outriggers for stability as anchoring systems are disregarded due to the uncertainty introduced by the revolute. The outriggers are stored in the chassis and are deployed in two phases. In the first one, they come out by turning in the vertical axis. The angle can be selected to search for the best position for stability, considering characteristics of the terrain and other issues. In the second one, the four feet will descend to level the rover and the main train. The second element is a platform that can rotate in the vertical axis. In fact, during the deployment, once the rover is leveled, it rotates 180 degrees with respect to the rover and the chassis. This rotating platform holds the mast of the crane and the container for the exploring robots. It is worth to mention that the crane is not detached from the rover in deployed mode. The reason is that the solar panel, batteries, and some other elements of the rover and the crane are placed in these electrical cabinets, which are used as counterweight of the crane. That is the reason why they are moved back with telescopic guides. If this is not done, the reach of the crane is considerably limited, or additional weight needs to be added just to behave as counterweight. The proposed solution helps in reducing the weight of the crane without losing reach or loading capability. Three types of masts have been studied. The telescopic, is the best known, as it is commonly used, but it presents some problems with the electrical cable of the wireless charger and the mechanical cable when extending and retrieving the mast. The scissor light presents the highest load capability, but is the bulkiest when stored. The Caterpillar 1 has no problems with the electrical or mechanical cable, but it has the lowest loading capability. The final step in the deployment process is extending the mast and giving it the desired angle. Coming back to the mission description, once deployed, the head will be lowered to check if the descending path is valid or if it presents some risks for the head or the exploring robots, like protruding rocks in the pit walls. It will also check for the suitability of the deployment point at the bottom of the pit for the exploring robots to be released and later wirelessly charged. The head is equipped with a sensor package to perform the previously mentioned task of checking the descent path and science missions is required. It is also equipped with a system for holding and releasing an exploring robot based on an electromagnet. Therefore, the robot needs to include a three millimeters thick steel plate. The energy demanded by all these elements comes from the electrical wire which runs in parallel to the mechanical wall and a power distribution unit. If everything is okay, then the crane will take the exploring robots one by one from its structure with the electromagnet.
and will place them at the bottom of the pit. Once all the robots are deployed, the head will remain close to the bottom of the pit. In this way, when any exploring robot is running out of energy, it can drive below the head and charge its batteries wirelessly, as shown in Figure 1. Also, the head will behave as a communication relay for all the robots in order to have contact with the rover and the ground station. The function of the communication subsystem is to support the control of the mission from the Earth, send real-time housekeeping data, and return scientific data. A radio link will be established between the Earth and the rover. Then a wireless point-to-point -point will be set up between the rover and the head, using a repeater at the end of the mast. The reason for using a radio link is that it's lighter than a cable link. This channel is critical for the mission, so all its elements will be redundant. The head will deploy a wireless network based on Wi-Fi protocols. Communication will be established in many ways. Exploring robots can use a high data rate channel to communicate with the head directly, but also those that are farther may interconnect with the head using other exploring robots as repeaters while they are performing their scientific work. Moreover, a low data rate channel can be set up for multipath communication. The primary of the wireless power charger is allocated in the head. The power flow goes from the rover, which takes the energy from its batteries or sonar panels, to the charging head through the power cable. The charging head is placed above the surface, but close to it. The secondary of the wireless power charger is allocated inside each exploring robot. These exploring robots will position themselves one by one below the charging head, resulting on an inductive coupling. The charging process results in a wireless power flow from the charging head to the robot until it's fully charged. Then it will resume its normal operation. The main advantage is the absence of connecting elements and a great independence from the bottom orography. Due to its criticality, all the elements except the coil are redundant. A parametric tool has been developed based on Excel spreadsheets. There is a master spreadsheet used by system engineers in which the main external input data is defined. It is also in charge of governing the data exchange between the spreadsheet of different subsystems to keep the rule of one source of truth. The spreadsheets of each subsystem are thought to be ruled by the domain engineers. The main internal variables are defined in one and only one of these spreadsheets and sent back to the master in case are needed by other subsystems. When all the calculations are finished, the master spreadsheet will receive the final design data which defines the final solution for given conditions. This data consists in the mass, power, data and link budgets, as well as characteristics like the maximum number of exploring robots that can be included in the mission. We can see here the main input and outputs gathered by the master spreadsheet. We can define some features of the mission, like the total mass of the mission, the mass of the rover, the number of exploring robots, the desired reach for the crane, it also provides the main outputs after calculations have finished. Missions can be defined dynamically and the new outputs are automatically calculated as soon as the decomposed power budget and decomposed math budget spreadsheets are refreshed. In this example, reducing the reach of the crane from 25 to 12 leads to an increment in the loading capacity of the crane, which means that heavier robots can be deployed in the pit, for example. 